1 Corinthians 14. So I decided to continue on it this week. Praise God. Talk about order in the church. Order in the church. Not order in the court, but order in the church. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, the reason that, uh, that I believe that God is having us teach on this is because it's going to cause us to move more in the gifts of the spirit in here yes. 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 we need the supernatural element yes. Don't we? Yes, i mean the word is good and the word is always our first place we always yes. teach the word we uh, boldly proclaim the word yes. but we need the moving of the holy ghost yes. the supernatural as well yes. praise god we don't want to come behind in any good thing right no, no. praise the lord so we're, I think that he's having me teach on this a little bit here so that uh, we can be ready and allow the Holy Ghost to use us supernaturally, right? Yes. Yes. Praise God. But still being in order, uh, especially in a small congregation like we are, it's important that we uh, go by God's way and not what necessarily our emotions or anything else might be, but only with God's way. That's the right way. Yeah. And we have to lay a proper foundation so he can bring others in to be with us. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. Praise God. And I really didn't plan to teach on this last week, but God spoke to me and said to do it. And then uh, I asked him this morning, what was I supposed to do? Go with this or go with something else? I have two other things on my heart that I wanted to share, but uh, he kept me with this. And I don't know if I'll finish it today, maybe next week, but... Uh, We'll try to get through the whole 14th chapter. We finished a few verses of it last week. Um, again, not certain how far we'll get. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Father, that we're hungry to hear your word from your Holy Ghost, Lord. Revelation knowledge is what we desire, Lord. Not man's wisdom. We want your wisdom, your Holy Ghost revealing to us what your word teaches us, Father, how to live, how to move, how to breathe. Our every step, our every thought, our every breath, Father, glorifying you, Jesus, lifting you higher, Lord, that you'll draw all men unto you. And we give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 Well, this chapter, chapter 14, is on church order. You have to understand that or you won't understand the chapter. Paul is talking to the yes. Corinth church about how to behave in the church. Yes. In other words, what is right, what's wrong, and how to do it. And the Corinthian church was a gifted church. They definitely had the Holy Ghost moving in their midst, but they were also very fleshly in many ways. So he set this out to place in order what should be happening inside the church when they meet. And uh, you need to keep that in mind as we read it. It's for the purpose that everyone can be blessed and not just a self-blessing. Now, God is not against you getting blessed yourself. Let me make that very clear. He's very much for that. He wants you personally to be blessed. But when we come together in the church, he wants the entire body to receive that same That's blessing right. Right. or more. Because he's interested in the group, the corporate body of believers, not just one in that case, in the church case, in the sense of the meeting. Praise God. Again, not taking away from the fact that you also need to be blessed and God will bless you abundantly. And all that you think, ask, exceeding abundantly above and beyond, I believe he puts it. Praise God. God is so good. Isn't he? So we're talking about church order when we talk about tongues and prophecy, which are primarily the two he's talking about in here. And uh, I would just call to your attention that if tongues have ceased and they are no more, then why would he devote a whole chapter in the Bible to telling you how to operate in it? What's right and wrong about it? So you see that 
that is man's religious teaching, it's actually Satan's, Amen. to stop the power of God from operating in your life, to tell you that tongues has passed away or that it's not needed anymore. It is needed. I need the power of God. I need the supernatural of God. Praise the Lord. And I welcome any supernatural biblical event in my life. Thank you, Lord. And if, in fact, I seek after that. I want that. Yes. Praise the Lord. I, I also would call to your mind, most teachers that adhere to tongues being either of the devil or non-existent anymore, most of those teachers have never received that experience themselves. Amen. So how can you listen to somebody teach you about an experience they've never experienced? Right. Well, you can't because they don't know. They've never been there. They've never opened that door. So you can't. So you just have to set that aside and realize that. I did read where Max Lucado got the Holy Ghost with tongues. He's testifying it online. And he's a pretty famous guy for writing children's books and stuff. But now he's a tongue talker like we are. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> His testimony is online about it. He's not uh, hiding the fact. He comes right out and says, I got it. I got that gift of another language. Praise the Lord. <laughs> So I'm I am thrilled about that. I wish they all would come out and say yes. that. I think maybe some of them get it, but they're too afraid to say it because they would lose their popularity. But they did not face him. He said, I've got it. You know, it is what it is. Thank God for a man of God that'll come out and say that. Praise the Lord. Well, Satan hates the gifts, you know that. So if you can't stop them by telling you they don't exist anymore or making you where you don't believe that they are for today, then he'll twist doctrine or he'll twist the use of them to pervert them because he, he wants to stop them, to discredit them, to destroy them. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. So he works overtime to do that. And we will not allow that, correct? No, we no. will not allow that. We're not ignorant of his right. devices. Yes, we understand his attacks yes, and we yes. stop them at the door. Yes, Praise yes. God. So last week we, we went over the first few verses here. Just in a brief review, 14.1, we're to follow after love, desiring spiritual gifts. Yes. Okay. So it's very important that love be the basis of everything we do in a church situation in our personal lives. Love is number one. Praise God. Hallelujah. And Jesus is love, isn't he? Yes, yes, yes. And we receive the love of God shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit given to us. Yes. We don't know how to love until we meet him. Right. Praise God. I see parents that are struggling but they're not saved, they have no clue how to love their kids because they don't have the love of God in them. And so as much as they may care for them, they still don't know the God kind of love. And it's, it's urgent and imperative that we practice that in a church setting amongst each other, being patient with each other, loving one another, especially as we move out in the gifts of the Spirit not to condemn one another if we make a mistake. Yes, if we don't step out and do it, then we'll never, ever get it done. But we might make some mistakes along the way as we step out. But we have love being the primary factor involved, keeping us. Verse 2, the one who speaks in an unknown tongue doesn't speak to another man. He speaks to God. We did mention that uh, the gifts that are mentioned in First Corinthians chapter 12, the nine gifts there, the tongues and interpretation of tongues, there are two kinds of tongues. Uh, Rodney Howard Brown says that it, the, the tongues that we receive at the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not that gift. I have never thought of it that way, but it's possible that it's correct uh, because it's really very separate in that 
you might pray in tongues all your life on earth and never give a tongue in church. So it's very possible that uh, that is the case. But nevertheless, you are, as a born-again believer, you should pursue the baptism of the Holy Spirit, of which comes speaking in tongues. Right. Right. Generally, it's the initial evidence, but prophecy can be as well. But generally, in the scriptures, the, the initial evidence of having received the Holy Ghost baptism is you'll pray in another language. So, uh, verse 3 said, the one who prophesies, they speak to men. And they speak to edification, exhortation, and comfort. Verse 4, we said, the one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, builds up himself, spiritually speaking. But the one who prophesies builds up the entire church. That's why in this first four, chapter 14 here, he's talking about church order for the church's good, for the sake of the church, not just your individual self. Although he's not against that, he just doesn't want you to be selfish. It's for the church when we come together. Verse 5, he said, Paul said, I wish that you would all speak with tongues. There's the will of God right there. Yes, it is. It's 1 Corinthians 14, 5. You ought to highlight it, underline it, or whatever you do in your Bible. He said, I would that you all speak with tongues. That's God's will. He wants you to speak in tongues. Yes, but then some people get confused because he says, but rather that you prophesied. You have to remember again, he's speaking to the church and in the church. Yes, and then he explains this statement. He that prophesies... Uh, greater is he that prophesies and he that speaks with a tongue, except, say except. Yeah. So that that uh, statement there has an exception. Right. Right? And yeah. here he listed, except he interpret. Yeah. Why? That the church may receive edifying. Yeah. Then it equals prophecy. Right. Glory to God. Amen. So, Verses uh, 6 through about 10 there, 11, talks about, uh, it's given the reason why you don't just uh, arbitrarily communicate to each other in tongues. Like, I don't walk in here and start talking in tongues to Bob, and he doesn't do that to me. Although I've seen that in churches. <laughs> yes, I have. People being funny and, you know, playing around. But... Uh, He's telling you why. He said, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what will it profit you? No. Well, only me would get the profit, the one speaking in the tongue. Okay. Except I'll speak to you either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by doctrine. Again, he's emphasizing the importance of order in the church yeah. and the edification of the church, not yeah. just one person. Yeah. Verse 7, even things without life giving sound, whether it be pipe or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds. How shall we know what's piped or harp? Meaning like if, if Bob got up here to play the piano, but he didn't know how to play the piano and he just started hitting notes, then people would put earmuffs on and leave. And so it's saying that there has certain sounds that make sense, that are music to us. I don't know yet. Now Bob knows how to play the piano good. But uh, if I were to get up here and try to play the piano, you definitely would. Probably say, I've got to go home early today, Pastor. <laughs> Verse 8, if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who prepares himself to the battle? What if he doesn't give the call to battle? Oh, yeah. He just oh. plays some screeches on it. Well, nobody know what to do. Oh. That's what he's saying here. So likewise, ye, likewise, meaning it's like we just went over, except you utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what's spoken? For you, you speak into the air. Yeah. Meaning that you, you, you're not making sense to the person next to you. You may be blessing yourself, but you're not blessing them. And the purpose of this chapter is so that the whole church gets blessed. Verse 10 said, there, there are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. Therefore... If I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian. He that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. This church must have been pretty wild if they were going to there do it. Uh, so he was just kind of setting them straight, letting them know what to do and what not to do. Verse 12, 
Even so ye, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, that's a good thing. Seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. And that's the, the whole theme of this whole 14th chapter. Be zealous of spiritual gifts, but do it to edify others as well as yourself. Now, if you're edifying the church, won't you get a blessing too? Yes. Absolutely. Yes, sir. So you're not, you know, just looking out for self. When we come together in a group here, we're looking to bless each other. And we need each other. Yes, Verse 13 said, Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. And that's an interesting statement because what that says is that if you have the faith to have the gift of tongues, then you also have the faith to interpret it. Hallelujah. Well, I didn't get a big amen on that one, but uh, I understand. So sometimes people will we'll give an oration in tongues and we just sit here looking at each other going, who's got the interpretation? Well, the same person that gave it could easily interpret it. Right. Whether or not they want to, that's another thing. But generally, we've got somebody that will. And, uh, and that's not a problem. Brother Durstein used to always teach, when I was there, this is years ago, may have changed now, but anyway, uh, when I was there, I used to always teach that it's generally the the ministry up front that does it because they've got a microphone that, that can be heard by everybody. But uh, but I don't know that that's always the case, especially in a, in a smaller situation like this. Don't matter whether you got a mic or not, everybody can hear you. So you yield to the Holy Ghost if he calls on you to interpret someone that's praying in the Spirit. And that's important. We don't move forward until that gets done. Okay. Until, until it's interpreted. Why? Because this, the service has been stopped. It's been interrupted by the Holy Ghost to give a word. And that word is actually a word of prophecy. Because it says that tongues, when interpreted, are equal to prophecy. So it's for the body of Christ, and it needs to be said. You also have to remember that it is an interpretation and not a translation. That's, that, that is the answer to whenever somebody has a little short blurb of tongues, and then somebody goes 10 minutes you know, with their interpretation. Oh, yeah. Because it's an interpretation and not a, a translation. It's not exact word yeah. for word. Right. Hallelujah. So you need to remember that. That's why it can mean the difference. Maybe it's a real long tongue and it's a very short interpretation. It can be that way too. Or it can be about the same uh, space of time. Yeah. That's not what you're looking at. You're looking to hear what God is saying. Right. What did he say? Yes. Yes. Don't get caught up in all that other stuff. Hear what he has to say yes. and be blessed. Yes. All right, verse 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth. I think this is one of the most important verses in this chapter. If I pray in an unknown tongue, it's my spirit I'm praying from my spirit. That's the Holy Ghost in me, praying through my spirit. But my understanding is unfruitful. I can actually pray in tongues, for instance, when I'm driving, yes. but I can be thinking about other things happening. Right. That's not such the case when you're speaking in English and you're not language because you're, then you're speaking from your mind. This is coming from in your innermost being, from your spirit. It's actually God praying through you. So, the biblical definition of then of praying in the spirit would be verse 14 here. Look at it again. If I pray in an unknown tongue, I'm praying in the spirit. My spirit prays. I'm praying in the spirit. So then when you come across scripture verses that tell you you should pray in the spirit, that's not some weird thing you got to do. It's actually just praying in tongues. So Jude 120 is an example, but you, dear friends, by building up yourselves up in your most holy faith, by praying in the Holy Spirit, that's, a, 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 I think, a new English translation. I can't remember which one I used. Anyway, uh, it says here, by praying in the Holy Spirit, you build yourselves up on your faith. Yes. So again, that's referencing praying in the Holy Ghost. Why? Why do I say that? First Corinthians 14, 14 said, when I Pray in the Spirit, 
when I pray in tongues, I'm praying from my spirit, in my spirit. Again, you could you know, say in Ephesians 6, 18, with every prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit. Yeah. That would be in tongues. Yes. Hallelujah. To this end, be alert with all perseverance and petitions for all the saints. So what do we do then? Verse 15. What what is what do we do? Do we just pray in the spirit? No. Because remember, there's people too. So what do we do? We pray in the spirit and we pray with our understanding. We sing with the spirit and we sing with our understanding, meaning that both need to be done. Yeah. Um, that would include uh, having the gift of tongues flow with an interpretation, <coughs> but it would also uh, include just when we're praying in here, worshiping God. Hallelujah. We do it both in a spirit and in our known tongue. Same way with singing. We don't really sing a lot in here in the spirit, but we need to. That's something that we need to develop and to flow in. Um, the reason why this is biblical and um, it's important to do what God says to do. Whether it's comfortable for us or not. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what do, verse 15 said, what do we do then? What is the answer? <laughs> well, I'm to pray in the spirit, that'd be in tongues. And I'm to pray in my known language as well. But it doesn't stop there. Nope. Said I'm also to sing with the spirit. Yes. Right. Hallelujah. And sing with that. I guess it's a little bit more difficult to sing with the spirit here because we're on canned music. You know, if we had a piano up here and a guitar or either or or both, then we could flow a little bit easier. Because when the song ends and we're praising God in the spirit, worshiping him, then somebody might want to break out and sing it in the spirit and we just flow in that. So we should practice that anyway. Yes, Maybe at the beginning or the end. I mean, Arlen, you know, leads in a little bit of praise. We could do it then. We could do it at the end of the of the session after uh, Baruch Adonai, as we're worshiping Him, right. just break out and right. and singing in the spirit. Um, those would be good times for it. Not necessarily the only times, but it needs to be developed. We need to do it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, uh, don't uh, think it's strange if. If we begin it, praise the Lord. Verse 16. Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks? Seeing he understandeth not what you say. That means if you gather around the dinner table and you give it thanks for the Thanksgiving dinner coming up, turkey, then if the person that is blessing the food just prays in tongues. Well, he prays a good prayer, but nobody else could agree with him because they don't understand what he was saying or she was saying. Verse 17 says, you, you truly give thanks well to the Lord, but other people are not edified in that. So you need both. You need to be able to pray in the Spirit and be able to pray in English or whatever your particular language is. <laughs> Verse 17, for thou verily givest thanks well. <coughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> but the other's not edified. Now Paul's testimony is verse 18. I thank my God Amen. I speak with tongues Amen. more Amen. than you all. Okay. <laughs> now, now, Paul wrote much of the New Testament. He was a mighty man of God. And if he would boldly say, I'm speaking in tongues more than everyone else, right, right. then shouldn't we follow suit to pursue that in our lives? Yes. Sure. I can tell you that in my personal prayer life, I speak more in tongues than I do the English. The reason is that I allow God to pray for me. Yeah. I might bring up someone or something in English. Right. But then I allow the Holy Spirit to pray and finish that yeah. in the Spirit because He sees the head. He knows everything. And I can only pray what I have an understanding of. But He sees it all. And so we just combine that for completeness. So 
He says, he speaks with tongues more than you all. Yes. Verse 19, yet in the church, so in the corporate setting, I'd rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Why? For the church to be edified. Right. He can go speak the 10,000 words at home or in his car, if they had a car, horse and buggy or whatever. Right. <laughs> he, he, could, he could do that anywhere. But in the church setting, then that's the time to speak where everyone can get a blessing. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Again, he's hammering that home to the Corinthian church, church order. That it's for the benefit of all, not just you. It's great you're blessed, but now it's time to bless everybody. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Okay, verse 20. Brethren, be not children in understanding. How be it in malice be ye children, but in understanding be men. Okay, so he's saying here, grow up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Learn to operate in the spirit. Right. Learn to understand the ways of the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, and quit being childlike yes, in the sense of no understanding, just kind of existing uh, and enjoying everybody else's blessing. But instead, you be a blessing. Okay? Be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be you children. In other words, in evil. But in understanding, we're to be men. God, God is telling us, grow up. Yeah. Grow up. Verse 21, in the law it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. And yet for all that will they not hear me, saith the Lord. That's an interesting uh, revelation here that Isaiah actually prophesied this. Tongues way back in his day. Yeah, that's interesting. So he's saying here in the law is written referencing Isaiah. With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak to this people. And yet, for all that, will they not hear me, saith the Lord. So that was prophesying the power of God coming to the church. The promised Holy Spirit being poured out and the church having supernatural wisdom, power, and understanding. It's written in Isaiah 28, 11, and 12. That's what he's quoting from. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Hallelujah. To whom he said, this is the rest. Look at that. Tongues, the Holy Ghost. Yes. This is the rest wherewith you may cause the weary to rest. This is the refreshing. Yet... They would not hear. Wow. Well, so, I've seen people receive the Holy Ghost with just stammering lips. They didn't really have a, a language. They just, oh, no, no, no. I heard that for a while. <laughs> it's, it's a great sight to see. And uh, it's just the way it is. You know, God is God. They got it. And they soon develop the fullness of life. I've seen people only got like one or two syllables. And they repeat that. One guy in front of mine repeat that for over a year. Same thing over and over. If he was going to pray in tongues, he said the same couple of syllables. Yeah. Dad was listening to a song the other day. He said, I like that song. There's only two words in it. <laughs> song about holy, holy. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can learn that one easy enough. I might even be able to sing that one. Holy, holy, holy. <laughs> so there's some people that, you know, you only get a couple of syllables. Who cares? Maybe you say it. Holy, holy. Pleasing to God. Who are you to argue with him about what your, your prayer language is? <laughs> so he prophesied. He said, with stammering lips and another tongue. He's going to speak to this people, the church. Amen. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith you may cause. The rest. That's the rest of faith. Yes. Having received promised Holy Spirit and all the benefits, the taste of heaven, foretaste of heaven that comes with it. This is the refreshing, yet there's many that will not hear. Yet they would not hear. First Corinthians 14, 22 is always a verse that puzzled me because uh, it was confusing. 
when you read 22 to 23. It says, Wherefore tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not. But prophesying serveth not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. Well, in my mind, I'm reasoning, okay, well, tongues, people, they don't understand it, so that's why, you know, they, they, they don't believe. But then the prophecy, you can understand what somebody say it, so, you know, it smites your heart, possibly. You would believe. Yes, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, I was in a church where a man from India, his Canadian Christian wife, he would accompany her in the church, not being a Christian himself, but just to honor her, he would go to church with her. And behind him was a person that spoke in tongues in the perfect Indian dialect. Mm, I've heard of that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that saved him. That's amazing. Oh, yeah. She didn't know what she was saying. Yeah, that's amazing. But it was for him. <laughs> so here, here's how to interpret verse 22 here. As best the Lord showed me. If you, if you can't agree with that, then that's up to you, and you can seek out the Lord yourself on it, but Here's what the Lord showed to me. Uh, the reason he said tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not, is a fulfillment of that prophecy. It, it's not like he's saying it's just for unbelievers. Tongues is not just for unbelievers. He's saying those who reject it is a prophetic fulfillment of Isaiah 28, 11, and 20. You understand? That's what he's saying in this. He's saying, tongues are for a sign, not to them that believe, but to them that believe not, but prophesying serve not for them that believe not, but for them which believe. In other words, we who believe in tongues also fulfillment because we received it. And so we, we, we have stammering lips in another tongue, but the ones who reject it, is also fulfilling it because he stated in the last part of it that for some they would not have it. So what he's just saying here in verse 22 is that this prophetic utterance is truth and is fulfilled. Yes. Hallelujah. That's pretty interesting. Although, although it was always presented, a, it was a difficult verse because I didn't see it, but you have to read what's happening in Isaiah 28, 11, and 12. So uh, verse 23 said, And therefore the whole church be come together into one place. Now he's going back to teaching about order in the church here. If you come together in one place and all speak in tongues, there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers. Will they not say you're mad? Uh, yeah. But if all prophesy, there come in one that believeth not or one unlearned. He's convinced of all. He's judged of all. So he's, it's just, again, going back to the fact that yes, when unbelievers hear people speak in a tongue, they don't understand it. They think, these people are nuts. I, you know, when I first came into church like that, I hit the back door real quick. I mean, I, I was out of there. But God, you know, he brought me back. And now I'm like Paul. I speak in tongues more than most people, maybe. I don't know. But, uh, but the first time, I was, oh, no. But if somebody had stood up prophesied, then it don't really take a lot of faith. If they're reading my mail, then I know, hey, God is in this place. And they're talking to him. So that, that's what he's saying here. Uh, because we understand what's being said. Verse 25, And thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest. And so falling down in his face, he'll worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. Okay, Which is the point of all this. It's so when. Verse 26, how is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you has a psalm, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. And look at this. Let all things be done unto edifying. Yeah. That's the key of it all right there. Yes. Let all things be done for the benefit of everyone. Yes. So this is a real church function. It's not on a program where we come in and we do this, 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 and then we go home. Yes. In fact, God has his own program, and he moves yes. the way he wants to. That? But when we come together, one has a psalm, that's a psalm. Somebody else teaches, that's a doctrine. Somebody has a tongue and interpretation, which would be prophetic. 
and a revelation. So some God showed somebody something this week. So these things should be active in the church, in the New Testament church today. You know, a lot of pastors are afraid. They're afraid to let people up there. Rodney Howard Graham was talking about that uh, one time he invited a friend of his had come to the meeting, big meeting, yeah. and a friend, and so he said, well, come and greet the people a moment. Come on up and greet the people. <laughs> and so the guy come up and took the microphone to greet the people, and he greeted the people, and he greeted the people, and he greeted the people, and, the people, and, the people, and then he preached to the people, and then he started laying hands on the people, and he just took two hours. <laughs> and, and, and Ronnie said, I never called on him again. <laughs> he came to the meetings, other meetings later, but I never called on him again. Finally, the guy asked him a few years later, how come you don't call me? Everybody else, you call him, come on. He said, I can't trust you. I gave you the mic, you took over. Yeah. It, it, instead of just greeting the people like you were asked, you took completely over. And, uh, and and that's what that's what I'm saying. It's not a one man program, right, right, right. but God has set the church, and He set order in the church, and He set protocol in the church, and it should be followed in order to have everyone edified and not a mass chaos program. Although it's not written in stone, as far as like we come in and sing one song, and then we take an offering, and then we do this, and we do that. it's not written down on a piece of paper when you come in. But God orchestrates it, and he leads through the leadership, through the pastor of the church. And, uh, and then if you, if you usurp or step out of that authority, whether it be from an emotionalism or feel like the Holy Ghost just all over and you can't hold it, you're out of order. I'm going to read you that here in a minute. It talks about... That the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So if you've got the Holy Ghost all over you, and you just got to get up and do something, well, you had better wait to the right time and be sure it's okay with the pastor before you do it. Because otherwise, even though in your zeal, and you may get blessed and they may get blessed, because God is merciful and he loves us. And, and, and you know, he's not out here to slap us upside the head. He wants to help us. But for maximum productivity, maximum moving of the Holy Ghost, That's needs good. to be That's ordered good. to it. That's what he's saying. Verse 27, if a man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, that by course, and let one interpret. So, again, he's limiting the order. Now, if it were just a free-for-all, because I'm led by the Spirit, and you're number four on that list of speaking in tongues with interpretation, you're out of order if you stand up and you That's speak in right. tongues. Because he says here, two or three at the most. At the most. And then one is to interpret. Okay, so you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. So you can say, well, I, God was all over me, Pastor. I couldn't stop it. No, he may be all over you, but he also gives you control to control it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Don't get mad at me. <laughs> but you see people say, well, you're limiting the spirit. You're quenching the spirit by stopping me. No, God did it. Not me. God said it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, there's a limit for tongues. There's not a limit on prophecy. But I don't know why he chose to limit tongues, but he did. That's up to him. I can ask him when I get there, but I can't tell you otherwise. <laughs> Verse 28, if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church. And let him speak to himself and to God. All right, so here, let me clarify that when we're praying in tongues, not for the benefit of everyone, we're speaking to God. That's why it's not uh, an offense to God if the church is praying. Like if, if uh, Madeline comes up here and prays in English, and we all agree with her, and some of us praying in tongues to agree with her, then... We're not praying so you can hear Madeline is, but you, we're not. We're praying to God. Right. So that's what he's saying here. Verse 29, let the prophets speak two or three. Now look at this. Let the other judge. You are to judge prophecy. You realize that? You have to be very careful with uh, prophecy. Prophecy, if somebody prophesies, well, uh, that you're going to go to the east of the river and yes. you're going to set up a church and you know you're going to preach there it very well may be true but personal directed prophecy like that god will show you yes. 
He'll give you the direction, not a prophet. Now, if a prophet comes by and confirms and says something like that, and you already know it in your spirit, then yes, that's a confirmation, and that's good. But don't go sell your house and your car and move to the North Pole because some prophet prophesied for you to go. Maybe the prophet just didn't like you and wanted to get rid of you. Wow. That's hard to think about, but I'm going to tell you, I know a church that, that I don't know if the church is still in existence, but it's not the same structure. It is. I know a church that paid a prophet to prophesy certain things to the people to cause them to do things. Don't think it doesn't happen. It does happen. So you're to judge. You're always to judge. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That is amazing. Isn't it? I mean, it's, it, in our mind, we don't think about it because we don't do that kind of stuff. But, you know, there's some wicked folks. That, that oh, yeah. So it says here we're to judge. We're to judge. That doesn't mean that we are to, uh, we are to you know, be ugly to them or say, ah, that's not right. Or, you know, again, when we step out of these things, there's going to be mistakes. And we are to allow love to rule. And we're not to hurt our brother or sister's feelings. Neither are we to discourage them because at least they stepped out by faith and tried. Assuming they had a pure heart and not being paid for it. I'm not talking about that. Uh, so we're to judge. Verse 30. How am I doing on time? Okay. Verse 30. If anything be revealed to another that sits by. Let the first hold his peace. That means make way for others. Yeah. Don't be like the guy with the running hair around. Just take over and nobody else get opportunity to say or do anything. That's what he's talking about. There. If, if, if you are have a prophecy, then prophesy and sit down. Let somebody else do it. You know, and maybe that God's calling them to. There should be order in the church. Yes, sir. And everyone should have opportunity to be used by God's spirit that's willing Hallelujah. Verse 31 said, you may all prophesy one by one. Say all. all. He didn't say that for the tongues interpretation. No. I don't know why. But everyone can prophesy. That all may learn and all may be comforted. Yes. Now here it is, verse 32. You should underline this. The spirits of the prophets, I don't care how spiritual you may be, <laughs> the spirits of the prophets are subject to you. God will never force his will. You know, to make you do something. No, he won't make you run up here and grab the microphone. No. <laughs> he won't. He won't. I, and I don't think anybody would do that. That's a that's a far cry. <laughs> but, but it's the same thing if somebody just all of a sudden speaks out in tongues in the middle of the congregation while I'm preaching. Yeah. That would just be equally as bad as coming up here and grabbing these. It's, yeah. it's out of order. I mean, it may be true that they have a word, but they need to hold it until yeah. the right time, then give it. We want to hear it. Just wait to the right time. Amen. So, the service is not to be a free for all. That's what God's saying. He's talking about in the church, the spirit of the province is subject to the province. That means, too, I can turn tongues on and off. I can speak at will in tongues. I can, I can pray in tongues at home. I can pray in my car. I can pray here. At whenever time I want to, because the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. So, I have the complete control. Um, I, I, I'm not forced to, uh, you know, I used to think people speaking in tongues, it rolled up and down the aisle, saliva coming out of their mouth, convulsing, and speaking in a foreign language. That's what I thought it was. But I'm glad to tell you it's not that. So you have full control. You can start or stop at will. The service must be orderly with the pastor having control. If you usurp authority over your pastor or the leader of the meeting, whether oh like a full gospel businessman meeting, you're really leading that may not be a pastor, but it's the leader of the meeting. That's right, that's right. If you usurp authority over him, you're out of order. Oh, yes. Even if you think and are convinced you're being led by the Spirit. You're, you're by the wrong Spirit in that case. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, verse 33. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really get into some neat stuff here in a minute. Oh, wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you want to go there or you want to close? No, no, no. 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 Yes. All right, verse 33. For God's not the author of confusion, That's right. but of peace. Yes. As in all churches of the same. God is not a God that is a confusion. So even though we don't have a program, there is an order to it. God sets the order, and the scriptures are the basis of that order. And the Holy Ghost is in, is verifying and obeying through you those scriptures. Verse 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches. Okay. Don't we go there? Yeah, go there. Go ahead. Let me go outside. I'll have the mic on so y'all can hear. I'll be right outside. <laughs> no, I'm for ladies. I'm going to explain this to you. I'm going to try to. Now, this thing is up for people fight over it all the time. I understand. Because it's, it says certain things that look really like it's, like, like it's it. But yeah, take the whole Bible. You can just take the scripture. And so, uh, don't get mad at me if you don't agree with what I'm about to say. Please don't get mad at me. I got tomatoes, dollar piece. I love the ladies and I love the men. Yes. Equal. Yes. Okay? So it says, let your women keep silent in the churches, for it's not permitted unto them to speak, but they're commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Yes. And if they learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it's a shame for women yes. to speak in the church. Okay. Another verse that they use with this one, people who preach against ladies, yes. is verse Timoth First Timothy 2.12. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So if you just take those verses, it builds a pretty good case against you ladies. And I'm sorry. Sure but you got to look at the rest of the Bible. Like, <laughs> yes. Yes. What was his name? Paul Harvey said, yeah, the rest Harvey. of the story. Yes. Yes. All right. First Corinthians 11, 5. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth. Well, how can that be if it just said shut up? Okay. <laughs> Is God... Double-minded? I don't think so. No. Okay. Yes. <laughs> what I'm saying here, and by the way, your hair is your covering. <laughs> but you can wear that if you want. I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> All right. What I'm saying here is that women pray and prophesy in the New Testament. Yes. Or why would he put that in 1 Corinthians 11? And why three verses later does he say, shut up? <laughs> How about Galatians 3.28? There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. Oh, <laughs> For you're all one in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. <laughs> and look at this, verse 17, Acts 2, 17. It shall come to pass in the last days. How many of the last days? Yes, sir. Yeah. Say it, God. I will pour out of my spirit upon Ooh, all the guys. No, oh. flesh. 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 That's right. Yes. And your sons and your daughters, daughters yeah. shall prophesy. <laughs> and your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. Yeah. And on my servant, and on my what? Handmaid. Handmaid. I got news for you. I am not a handmaid. <laughs> None of you guys in here are handmaid. There might be some confused folks out there that think they're in here, but they ain't in here. All right? And maidens are women. And he said, I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon them, and they shall prophesy. Hallelujah. Yes. Here's what God is saying when he's in there. Now, I'm not, I wasn't back there in that church to what he was correcting, yeah. but there must have been something. something. And what he's doing is making it clear that the Holy Spirit is saying to the church yeah. regarding interrupting the service yeah. out of order. Right. 
which would include men that do that too. Yes. Evidently happened that the ladies were doing it in the Corinthian church, right. and so he corrected them. But if men jump up and do that, they also need correction too. Right. 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 Hello? Amen. There's a time and a place to clear up any misunderstanding that you may have, but it's not challenging the leadership in front of everybody no. in the middle of the service. Amen. Hallelujah. I was at a Kenneth Copeland meeting one time, big convention. They cut this out of the TV. You watch that program on the TV, but they cut these things out. But in person, you see it. And this guy, he was in about the fourth or fifth row out. A lot of people and became very belligerent, started screaming and hollering at Brother Copeland. You know, he was wrong, this and that about him. Brother Copeland handled it very well. Went down and spoke with him, came off the platform, went down and spoke with him, interrupted the service, and uh, and uh, ended up smoothing it out where that, uh, you know, he could continue on. Otherwise, they would have had to have the uh, deacons or someone to support him out. Yeah. But, uh, but he was able to salvage the guy. He sat there through the meeting. Um, but here's the thing. Whether it be male or female, in this case it was female evidently in the Corinthian church. Whether it be male or female, we're not to be out of order in a church right. yes, service. Sir. Where that instead of everybody being edified, everybody gets disgruntled. Right. And everybody goes, what is going on? This place is out of order. I can't come here no more. No, no, no. There's a time and place. It's not necessarily wrong to find an issue with something that someone says. Many people go back and say that was talking about the ladies talking about judging the prophecy because it had just come out about judging prophecy. But I don't think it was that personally. I think it's for everything in the church. And that if you uh, don't consider other people around you and you act on your own, Male or female, you're wrong. Yes, you just don't do that. Yes, and so I think that's what he was saying. I think it's very clear that you ladies prophesy, which can be a form of teaching the word. Uh, the people who water down prophesy, they say, they say that's what it is. It's not totally what it is, but it is speaking the word. Prophecy is speaking the word. When you teach, you are speaking the word. But right. I'm not up here prophesying. I'm teaching. Yes. But the people who water it down call it that. It's not that. Uh, prophecy is supernatural. And ladies, you have the Holy Ghost just like I've got the Holy Ghost or a man's got the Holy Ghost. And you can prophesy just like a man. Maybe better sometimes. Because women are more in tune to the Holy Spirit most of the time. They hear God a little bit clearer for some reason. I don't know why. Just their makeup, their nature, I guess. You know, the new nature. Yeah. All right. First Corinthians, first Corinthians 14, 36. Moving on from that muddy water. All right, what well, came the word of God out from you? Or came it unto you only? In other words, are you the only one that know the truth? No, it's from God. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write to you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, here it is, covet to prophesy. And don't forbid it. Yeah, that's right. Well, what do they do with that scripture, those who teach against it? I don't know. What do they do with it? Do they just put on blinders and say, oh, that, that's not there. We're going to skip to verse 40. That's the Oh, yeah. Verse 40 says that all things be done decently in order. That's the key to the whole thing. Yes, sir. That's right. I hope that helps you. <laughs> now, here's what I want you to do with it I want you to use the biblical order. And begin to prophesy, begin to speak in tongues, and begin to interpret, begin to move in all the gifts. Begin. Some of you have a psalm, some of you have a doctrine, some of you have this, some of you have that. Begin to move in that. Don't hold back. That's right. Ask God to help you to do it. Yes. Ask God to say, Lord, I want to do it in order, yes. but I want to do it. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I want yes. this church to be on fire. Yes. Fire. Yes. Yes. Like yes. the Holy Ghost will have his way. Yes. Yeah. And that God will be glorified. Yes. And souls will be yes. saved yes. and delivered yes. and healed yes. by the supernatural power of God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Praise God. Well, <laughs> praise the Lord. We got some songs today. Yeah.
What do you all think? Look at our son who came today. That's yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. God is good. So nice. We had fun with him yesterday, you know. That's great. That's a lot of fun. Are you okay there? Yeah. We're ready. Yeah. Praise God. I am too. Hallelujah. Yeah. <clears throat>
such a free hallelujah to the rhythm. Forget about the past, he's here right now, touching you right now, hallelujah. Oh, we glorify your name, Father, you're wonderful, I love you so much, we all love you so much. Thank you for your spirit, thank you for the words, the words of life that has just spoke over us today, you who 
I have a broken spirit and are heavy hearted. For I am the Lord your God that have come to meet you in this place today. Hallelujah. When you go out the door, I don't want you to go out the same. I want you to come with an understanding that I am here to heal you and to take care of any problems that exist in your life. Hallelujah. I am here to tell you that suicide is not the answer to anything on the way out. I come to heal your heart, to heal your broken heart, and to heal your mind in the name of Jesus. presence come into my bedroom Hallelujah. and I thought sure it was Duke <laughs> but it came to my bed I was not fully asleep and I felt when they put their hands down on each side of my bed Ooh. and they bent down and kissed me on my forehead wow. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. What makes it more awesome is that what I said to Duke, I felt you when you come in and kiss me this morning. <laughs> oh. Who was that? He said, I hate to disappoint you, baby, but it wasn't me. Like Samuel and Eli. Yeah, right. right. <clears throat> but I'd been in a battle with some things going on nobody knew about yeah and asking the Lord to reveal himself to me thank you Lord yeah. thank you Lord how wonderful how so thank you Lord. he revealed to me thank you, Lord. that I'm his beloved yes, yes that's yes. right by kissing me on my brow thank I remember it put a smile on my heart Madeline oh, and I yes. turned over and went yes. back to sleep yes sister yes I thought that was so out of the norm for Duke to come in and kiss me on my forehead <laughs> then that very same morning at around 5 30 he was sitting at the computer we had just finished god is yeah. real. getting ready for god is real right right and i was in the front room and i was moving this chair and it was a bit heavier than i thought it caught my left toenail on my big toe and it yeah, just peeled it right back oh. I and I sat on the couch and I said, Oh, Jesus, take me, Jesus, take yes, me. Yes. Yes. Duke said he had no idea I'd have injured myself. Wow. Josephine was in the guest room. But I sat on that couch and I just grabbed my toe. Oh, yeah. Jesus, take me. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 Did you know I went to the get to the guest bathroom and blood was all over the floor yeah. from oh, bleeding Lord, and Oh, I cleaned it all up, bandaged my toe up, and I went and said to Duke, I said, I injured myself. He said, I never heard you. I said, because I just grabbed it, just began to call on Jesus. Amen. Yeah. That's right. I said, he took the pain. Yes. Wow. He took the pain. Yes. Then I went into the war room. <laughs> the war room, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the spirit of laughter came on me about a half hour into prayer, and he laughed through me, and he laughed through me. And you know what? It just made the devil that much more mad because Jesus had come in and kissed me, and then left me with a smile, comforted my spirit within me, and then he thought, okay, I'll show her, I'll mess her up. But then you know when the spirit of laughter came upon me, Brother Ron? I came out of that war room free as a cot, line as a feather, pain free, 
Hallelujah. To be the gentleman and the husband he is, is today you're not doing anything. You're going to rest. And I, you know what? Come dinner hour, I was in there preparing dinner for us. Amen. So God is good. The tongue is pain free. Hallelujah. And I thank God this morning that Jesus cares enough about us that he will come to us and reveal his love to us however he needs to do it. I thank him and I love I'm a little amiss, amiss because uh, Thank you. when we were praying and the pastor was saying, now's a good time, you know, to hear a word. Um, um, I didn't, I didn't give it, but I have to give it. All right, good. The Lord told me that that He said it in this manner: My sons and daughters, you are my children. Thank you, Lord. I love you so much. Yes, Lord. You are the ones who are carrying out my work. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are not to be discouraged or to Thank despair. You, yeah. Thank you, because you are the ones, yes. through my Holy Spirit, that is holding back the evil Thank you, Lord. in the world right. at this moment. That's the Lord. So keep on going. Keep doing it. And don't despair or be discouraged. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right, Ron. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Good. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Hallelujah. Whatever you need from Him, you receive it today. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. I don't know if it's going to be as prophetic as it is pathetic. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> but it's a good pathetic. <laughs> we love your sleep. And I'll, and I'll explain that in a moment here. <laughs> oh, um, you know, this morning, the Lord really, really spoke to my heart. Um, I've been to big churches, many churches. Yeah. And here is my family. Yes. Yes. You know, it's not the blood relationship in the flesh. That's right. It's the blood relationship in the spirit. That's right. Because right. 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 you know, we got the, the blood of Jesus yeah. in yeah. our hearts. And I come here, I don't feel that I have to compete. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I don't feel that I have to prove myself to right. people. Right. That's so ridiculous. I'm accepted. Yes. I'm respected. Yeah. And you know, I don't get that at home. Hallelujah. Right, understand. Yeah. That's the yeah. pathetic part. Of it. Oh, that's yeah. the pathetic thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's the pathetic part. Of it. Oh, sorry. But you know what? God gives me the strength. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you. The power Thank to you, move Jesus. forward. Yes. yes. And that's in this song. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. That's good. That's good. Everybody's trying. Take my faith away, but I won't let the devil. Condemn me for believing and tend me to do wrong while they live a life of sin. I've been searching and I've been seeking all the rich things that a man just could not. I found something. Praise him, praise him. All the money in the world is just. Hallelujah. Yes, right. yes. Right. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Everybody's trying to take my faith away, but I won't let the day. Yeah. 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 To condemn me for believing 
and they tempt me to do wrong while they live a life of sin. Oh, 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 oh. I'm talking, I'm talking about Jesus. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, He comes to save us. Yeah. 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 I see that inside. Oh, he's come to me. He's come to me. Jesus. for you, 